much done, okay? So let's start testing it. Now batteries. I'm going to talk a little bit about batteries, okay? Batteries are not all made the same. As I've mentioned, um, I've actually taken batteries apart just because I want to see what's inside. I wanted, I wanted to see how they're, how they're built. What I found is Duracell the batteries are um, probably the best made, you know, consumer batteries I've found. Okay, hang on a second. Okay, probably the best made consumer batteries I've found. Okay, now what's inside a 9 volt? Well, let me show you. I actually just took one of these apart again so I can show you. You have typically, you have um, six alkaline cells, you know, they're wired in series and they are, um, they add up to nine volts or thereabouts, all right. Some other types of construction, you have what's called a pile construction where you actually have cells that are, that are coming down like this, um, not my, that's definitely not my favorite method of construction, I think this method of construction is easily the best, but even with manufacturers that do this method of construction, there are differences. If we look at what Duracell does, at least these Duracell Pro cells that I use, they are actually, um, they're not soldered in place, but they're spot, spot, spot welded. There's a spot welded strap that attaches all of, all of the cells to each other. This is very sturdy, very good constru construction, you see? Okay. Other manufacturers, I don't remember exact exactly who. I've been in, inside a bunch of bunch of, of uh, batteries when I when I was was uh, selecting one. Other manufacturers, these straps are actually not even spot welded or soldered or anything on. What they do, the straps are just sitting there, and there's like a piece of cardboard or paper or something like that. And the only thing that that keeps everything in contact is just the piece of metal, you know, the packaging of the battery. It's scrunched down and it keeps everything to get together. All right? So I forget what type of battery Eric Johnson likes, but there might actually be something to it. You know, you could imagine if things aren't in intimate contact like this and welded together, that maybe when the battery, you know, depending on temperature or handling, or just how well the machine is working that day, how tightly things get scrunched down, or if there's stress on the pack, you could imagine that maybe there really is some sort of difference. Maybe, right? Anyhow, I use... I use Duracell Pro Cells. It's the best I found. I buy them by the gross, I think, so they're not very ex very exp expensive at all if you buy them in large quantity. So I, I would encourage you guys to go. Uh, you know, you know where where do I where do I buy them from? There's some safety supply place, some place that ca caters to like you know firefighters and things and things like that. You can just buy them in a big box of like a hundred of them or 144 or 75. You know, whatever whatever it is, just buy a big box. Get to get together with a bunch of friends. You know, ten you know, 10 guys and just buy a bunch of these, um, these, uh, ba batteries and you'll get them much cheaper than you'd get them at Home Depot and they're also built a lot better. All right. The other advantage to these is they come with these little caps. Now I cannot ship this plugged in. I have to ship it unplugged. So having that cap is very, very convenient because I can kind of ship it like that unplugged and it's not going to short out against anything. Okay. Okay, very good. So a couple of tricks. Well, first let's test it. it isn't going to be a sound test. Give a little twist. See, see how see how nicely that fits. Okay, this is a good layout for the for for this this particular box, the 1590 BBs. This is a really good layout where the battery just kind of fits between the jack and here. And then there's a piece of foam that's going to come here. Now I'll show you how um, I do that. But what I want to do is test to make sure that this thing works. So I have just a piece of um, a um, jack. I have an old jack. OK. 
Okay, uh, an old uh, plug. That's what I'm going to do. Just plug them in. Make sure it lights up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to test that part. Okay? I'll show you how. I'm just just testing for power right now, and and, and I do this before I, before I plug I plug in the chip. If there's a there's a problem, what I don't want to do is blow up the chip. Now these chips are pretty sturdy, anyhow, but still, it's just good form. This jack unplugs when you plug in a um, a, a, a power from here. It actually dis disconnects the battery. Okay, so what I'm gonna do? Can you can you see that? See, I'm not sure if you can actually see it. Come on and off. Yeah, you can. Okay. What I'm doing, I'm going to plug it in part way until I see it go off. See? Let me, let me stand up here. I'm having trouble seeing it myself. Okay. Let me do that. I'm going to plug it in part way. I'm not sure why that's not showing up very well. Let's see. All right, you know, what I'm going to do is turn off the lights. The lighting in here is really strange right now. Uh, because this camera is a piece of junk and it's all I was able It looks like it's really bright, but it's really not. The lighting in here is... Okay, there we go. Plug it in part way, and you'll actually see it go off. And now you'll see the effect, the effect of the bypass cap. See how that, as as the power, as the battery gets disconnected, it takes takes it takes a while. And see how it ramps up too. Yep. All right, it's not instant. It's because things need to sort of warm. Uh, you need need to charge up the caps. Okay. A anyhow, so now I know the battery works. Now I know the switch disconnects the battery and now uh, when I plug in all the way it now attaches to the wall wart and I know that that works so now I know that the power is correct at least okay, I guess this isn't strictly wiring anymore sort of morphed into something else but whatever my YouTube channel I'll do what I want Okay. Now what I want to do, you know, you know, you'll be able to apply to apply these techniques to all to all sorts of different things. I have some foam that I have cut to approximately the right size. Okay. What I'm going to do is um, sort of measure it by eye. Make sure. It's the right size. I usually cut it a little bit long, and then I'll come back with a razor blade and make the right cut. And that's approximately the right cut. Take off even just a little bit more. I'm gonna make sure all of my wires are not in my way. And I'll take off just a touch more. Okay, that's a nice fit. I'm sure. There we go. Nice snug fit, right? What I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of double-sided tape on the bottom. I'm not going to go the entire, the entire way. What I'm going to do okay, first I'm going to trim the tape. It's a little bit wider. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the back side, this side here, without tape on it. Now, I strictly don't actually really need the tape because this actually fits sort of like the bat, like the battery, between there and and the corner here. So that so that would just stay put if I just left just left it alone. But the tape, you know, belt and suspenders. Okay. A couple things I'm gonna if if this tape went all the way to the edge as I tried to put this in, it would just get 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 caught here and just just be a big pain. So what I'm going to do instead. Okay, I'm going to um, leave it, and then when I put it in, I'm going to push this end down first. Okay, I'm actually going to loosen up the fit just a touch more. Move tight. You know, maybe a different size battery would not fit well. 
Okay? So I'll push that in down first. I'll do that. Okay? But there's one more issue here, and the issue is that that battery lead actually interferes, it gets stuck between here and the switch, right? So all we're going to do is come back with my razor blade and snip off the cover. So now, now we have a nice place for the battery to go. Okay? The battery lead to go. So here we go. Like I said, not strictly just soldering, but general, but now we're getting into some general electronics slash um, uh, wiring techniques, okay, that you could apply all over the place, okay. Peel off the tape, stick it in the back side first, like we said, because that's the side without the tape, and just push it down. And um, that's it. Okay. Nice. Now, it might still rattle just a little bit. If you get a smaller battery, it might rattle a little more. If you get a bigger battery, it might not rattle a little, a little less. But that's all there is to it. Nothing to it. Pop out this test battery. Take a brand new battery. I stick it in with the... Um, with the end against the box, with the protector on it, with, with the cap on it, like that. Stick it in. Ta-da. Okay, it's all nice. Only one last thing to do, at least before we close the box up. I'm going to put on my wrist strap. I'm going to grab, hopefully if I can find them, some op amps. Okay. Yes, this has an op amp in it. Okay. Double check that's the right one because this is a new tube. It is. Now, what you have to do with do with these, you don't have to but it helps. They're not, they're not straight. They're kind of bent out, which is, which is, which is correct. That's how, you know, that's how they're designed to be for other, other steps. However, when you're putting them in a socket, it helps. <laughs> helps not to drop them on the floor. Now I could probably pick that up and use it, but for how cheap these are, I'm just gonna let it go. I'll probably replace the tube with another tube later. Okay. What I'm going to do, and, and now you see this is a blue, this blue mat is actually an anti-static mat. What I'm going to do is put the lead, put, put this over like that, and just sort of roll it forward. Okay. And straighten these out much better to put into a socket. Okay? And then into the socket we go. Okay? Very last step. Try it. You can just push it straight down. I found it works better if you sort of wiggle it. Works a little bit better. At least to get it started. Even so, sometimes it's still doesn't quite seat perfect, perfectly. Um, like I said, it doesn't really have to seat perfectly. Okay. Yeah, some, sometimes it fights you just a, little, just a little bit. It's a little bent. There we go. Okay. That's it. That's done. Oh, well, I still, I still have to put on, put on the knobs. I'm gonna put on the. I have a little trick for the knobs too. Okay. 
Now I'm going to give it one last look. Now, of course, we've been checking everything out as we go along. We've been really anal about stuff. I'm going to give just one last look, make sure everything's good. And I'm going to say goodbye, because hopefully, once I close this up, I will never see it again. This will never come back. Um, I'll never have an issue. I will never see it again. So I'm going to say goodbye to it. Last time I'm going to have a look inside. I'm going to sign this. I don't. I don't have a. Uh, I don't have a serial number in these. Um, it's just signature and month year. Okay. And yeah, I'm anal with this too. I make sure that that's up. So when they open it up, it's not upside down. <laughs> I know. I'm really persnickety with stuff like that. All right, that's it. And we are going to have to give it a little, little bit of a test now. We're not uh, definitely not going to turn this into an advertisement for my uh, my products here. But we are going to have to plug it, plug it in at least for a second and make sure that it actually works. So we are going to be going to do that. But just a very cursory test. This is not going to be the full. I, I, it does go through a full functional test um, before it leaves. So that means I have a standard set of things I do, play, listen for. Um, if it doesn't sound right to me, then again, it's not. It's not going to lead to shock. That happens on occasion. Every every now and then, there's just one that. Just something wrong. Um, so. Sometimes it's just a bad op amp. You know, these op amps are funny. They're sturdy. They're sturdy as hell. But if if you zap them, what happens is um, they can get noisy. Their characteristics change a little bit. You know, they still work, but they don't quite sound right. It's often when there's a problem. Uh, it's oftentimes I, I wasn't, um, you know, I forgot to use my straps here, or did something dumb and maybe zapped an op, op amp or something like that. That hardly ever happens. I think that's happened once. Um, usually they just kind of work. Okay. Little trick for these knobs. Now, I'll be honest, these aren't my favorite knobs. However, what they have in them that a lot of them don't see that little metal metal nut there that means that they're not going to strip there's a lot of knobs that are just um, just plastic and they're very easy to strip there's a handful out there that are like this that you can get that will never strip um, so I've kind of learned to like the aesthetics of these knobs <laughs> Uh, because they're high, they're high quality knobs. They're really great knobs. And again, um, you can get these through Small Bear or Lek for you for your own um, projects. Okay. What I'm going to do: turn all of the pots down. I'm going to show you how easy this this is. I, I I see people struggling with this. I show you how easy this. Turn all the pots down. One 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 way or another, clockwise or counterclockwise, however you like. And I'll start with one and I'll tighten it up just barely so that there's some friction on it and then I'll turn it in this case I turned all the pots counterclockwise I'm going to turn this counterclockwise until it's just where I want it and then and then cinch it down so what I'm doing is now I'm not guessing where that knob is and what I can do is very quickly okay, line it up by eye without really having too much trouble Okay. See, there's see there's um, friction on here, so I know that I'm turning that knob against the stop. Okay. So there's no guessing where I am. Okay. Well done. Voila. Let's plug it in. Have an old. Um, not too old. Jeez, 
it's not old at all. <laughs> it's, almost, it's, almost, it's almost new. I forgot. I forget, people forgot the champ I had in here. This is a Blues Deluxe. Young Blues Deluxe. This guitar is probably not even in tune. Because we're not trying to make music here. We'll test to make sure that we work. Okay. Let's grab, um, I just happened to be plugged into this old Epi. Okay. Now, well, let's see. Does it work? No. Yeah, I obviously have something plugged in wrong. It's just unplugged. I was obviously testing some something else here at one point. There we go. Okay, that's just a nice clean tone. All I'm gonna do, like I said, we're not gonna do a demo here. I'm just gonna turn everything to noon. Everything to noon. Just make sure it works. steps left out. Warts and all. Not sure how many of you <laughs> actually watched the whole damn thing, but for those who did, thank you. And um, there's going to be more, more coming. We're going to be doing cable work, we're going to be doing guitar work, and uh, we'll see what other kind of work we can do. I don't know. Want to see some work? Send me an email, john at jcolochaguitars.com. Thanks much. Take care. Bye-bye.